Hi, I'm Ross. And I'm Neris. And today we're going to show you how to measure the speed of light using nothing but a microwave, a ruler, and a bar of chocolate. So this is a really easy experiment for you to do at home. And the best thing about this kitchen quantum mechanics is that you can eat your results afterwards. A microwave oven uses microwave light to cook your food, hence the name. Now, light travels as a wave. Yes, sometimes it behaves like a particle, but for today, we're going to be thinking of it as a wave. Waves transmit energy from one place to another. So let me show you what I mean. If I give Ross this cable, if I add some energy to the cable, it travels from me to Ross. But the waves in a microwave don't travel from side to side. Instead, they go up and down. So let's give it a continuous stream of energy. Now the wave doesn't seem to be going from me to Ross, it seems to be standing still. So this is what we call a standing wave. Now the point here in the middle is called the node and that seems to not be moving. And that's the point of lowest energy. Now the top of the bottom of the wave are called the antinodes and they're the points with the most energy. It's these antinodes in your microwave that are the hottest parts. So they're the parts that cook your food. And that's why you need to have the rotating plate in your microwave to make sure the food is cooked evenly all the way through. So to measure the speed of light in your microwave, we want to stop the plate from moving around. We do that by taking out the wheels. Get rid of those. Uh, next, you want to put your chocolate into the microwave. Make sure you keep it nice and flat. Close the door, and then we're going to set it on high for 15 seconds. We only want to melt the chocolate a tiny bit. We don't want a big chocolate puddle. So the melted parts are where the antinodes are in our microwave, the hottest parts and the solid parts are where the nodes are, so where there wasn't very much microwave energy at all. So we want to measure the length of a single wave, so take your ruler and measure between two of the antinodes. So roughly six centimetres. But this is just the distance between two adjacent antinodes, a peak and a trough. To get the total wavelength, we need the distance between two peaks. So multiply this by two to get 12 centimetres, or 0.12 metres. So to find our speed of light, we also need to know the frequency or waves per second of our microwave. And this is measured in hertz. You can find this on your back of your microwave. Ours says 2,450 megahertz. So you multiply this by a million to get that in hertz, which is 2,450 million hertz. So we need to multiply this by our wavelengths, 0.12 meters. Uh, so 0.12 multiplied by 2,450 million hertz. And this should give us our speed of light. 294 million meters per second. Is that it? Yes. Is that it? <laughs> so the speed of light in a vacuum is 299,792,458 meters per second. In air, it's a little bit lower than that. Our number was still a bit too low though but we were only using a ruler and a bar of chocolate. So maybe it's not the most accurate method, but we got pretty close. Why don't you guys try it out at home and let us know how you got on with your chocolate quantum mechanics. Mm. Delicious quantum mechanics. <laughs> Eat my chocolate. For more experiments to try at home, check out how to make something invisible or how to make 3D pictures without the silly glasses. And for more science every week, click subscribe. Thanks for watching. So to find our speed of light, we also need to know the frequency or waves per second of our microwave. This is measured in hertz. You can find this on your back of your... Blah, blah, blah. Blah, blah, blah. Blah, blah, blah. Right. Try that again. 